morning and I will explain a little bit what we did today because it's different than what you're used to doing okay um, at uh, Vietnam Temple on the new moon full moon we go in and we uh, renew the precepts now I, I gave it the name renew precepts uh, but it also can be called making confession of things I've done wrong and so uh, the ceremony which normally at Vietnam Temple takes about an hour because we, we recite the 88 names of the Buddha do you need somebody to translate? no? you okay? alright so and we do 108 bows so it's very athletic going down, coming up, going down. So does everybody know why we do that? Nobody's shaking their head or anything. Okay. At the end of this ceremony we did today, first of all, I'll tell you how this ceremony came about, then I'll explain to you why we do it. <clears throat> when I was in Long Beach, I had a very, very small temple. This is huge compared to what I had there. And on the new moon and the full moon, we would do the ceremony of bowing. That's what I call it, the ceremony of bowing. And I had one person that liked to bow, and everybody else stayed away. Because a lot of work, you get hot, sweaty. Once I move up here, maybe 20 years ago, I used to go to Orange County every week. And sometimes I went to Tai Fup Chow's Temple in Orange County, and sometimes I would arrive and he would tell me, oh, tonight we do the ceremony for bowing. You have your yellow rope. Well, I had a room there, so I kept a yellow rope there all the time, so I did never a problem. But I had five monks that were training with me, and they didn't like to do the bows. So they would arrive, and I would say to them, I'd be downstairs waiting for them. i say, you have your yellow rope? Put your yellow rope on. It's we bow. Oh! Now, this man right here, he's been coming many times. He's a professor at college. And he walked in that door one day, and we were doing this ceremony. I never forgot it. He said, oh, it's that Sunday. <laughs> because he but would I have came. stayed home. Yeah, I came today, and I knew, though. Yeah, I'm proud of you. That's progress. <laughs> yeah, but that, I never forgot. This was years ago. He came through the door. He looked around. Nobody here. But we were dressed up nice. He said, oh. <laughs> so, when in the old days for me with Americans, this is the reaction I got. Americans go, oh, oh, so many bows. Oh, why do we do this? Oh, so much chanting. Oh, why do we do this? Oh, we Americans. So then I started to try to change things so Americans would come and about, I don't know, a long time ago, 15, 20 years, somewhere back there. I don't keep diaries, so I don't know when. But I had a, a monk who became a friend, and he had a temple in Vancouver, Washington. And he asked me to come there during the summer for three weeks while they do a retreat. And I was the old guy back then. See, I'm not even old now, right? <laughs> and so he was translating a poem that a monk had written and that's what we did today and he said what do you think now I, I don't speak Vietnamese not really and I, I don't you know I read a few words speak a few words but he didn't want me to translate the words he wanted me to translate the, the meaning and the poem it, I, I knew what the the monk was saying, but you know, if you take a dictionary and you translate each word, when you get done, it makes no sense. You, you have to understand the meaning behind the word, right? Or you're lost. I do this with Vietnamese all the time. I get my Vietnamese, big Vietnamese dictionary and starts translating and go, oh, it, no, it doesn't mean anything. But then I have to stop and think, okay, what's the meaning behind? So I help him with that, and I came home with that, and I thought, this is good, what we recited today, you know. 
that people with problems, problems be solved. People that are hungry will have food. That I will be good. All these are good ideas, and I know where they come from. Different sutras, I see this monk pull them in. And I think, well, maybe Americans will do that. And then I can't have them do 100 bows. They never come back here, you know, like him. You know, on his calendar it says, don't go, too much work. So we cut it down. I don't know how many there is. I don't, I haven't counted, but less than 20, I think. You know, so everybody can do it. And if they can't do it, they can just bow from the waist. Or like old people, sometimes just sit on the floor and bow. But I think we need to do this ceremony. So why do we even do it? Because we're not perfect. All right, the first precept is not to take life. The foundation belief, the ultimate belief of Buddhism is to not do harm. So I see two brown robes. Where did you guys come from that you have those nice brown robes? Mm -hmm. Long Beach? In Orange County. What temple? Oh, anywhere? Okay. Well, only, only a few places. I only ask because only a few places have the brown robes. I like the brown robes. Yeah. I'm so happy that her kid understands you know, yeah. always go to Vietnam and she don't understand all. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm so happy, I'm very happy how my kid then, how we go over my way, my kid, my kid, my kid, my kid, my kid. I want for my kids, I don't want for my no more. <laughs> so I want for my kids, I'm happy, happy because you know that, right? Do oh, you like it? you like it? Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You need to be happy that we are very happy to move to the other one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You too. Who do you guys go among the other one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go among the I want to go among the So, here is the thing you have to understand. And sometimes people get confused. To become a Buddhist is not to take the precepts. In America, we say take precepts. And it's misleading. People get confused. You take, you keep the precepts to be a good Buddhist. Okay? To be a Buddhist, you say, I go to the Buddha for refuge. I go to the Dharma for refuge. I go to the Sangha for refuge. You say it three times, magic. You say it three times, now you're Buddhist. You may be a bad Buddhist, but you're a Buddhist. Then you try to be good Buddhists, and the Buddhists say, when people came to him, they say, I don't want to be monk. I want to stay home. I want to have kids. I have a pretty wife. I want to work my farm or my store or whatever they did, but I want to follow you. So what should I do? Give me, tell me what to do. And he said, come back tomorrow. And he looked at what he told his monks to do. And he picked five things that were the most important. And I think they're the most important for everybody that follows the Buddha. Don't take life. Number one, at the very foundation of Buddhism is the idea of ahimsa. It's an old Indian idea. I don't know if the Buddha invented it, but he said we must do this. Do not do harm. No harm. It's a very important idea. So when we say, I'm not going to do harm. I'm not going to kill someone. But also, I'm not going to do violence. Doesn't mean you can't protect yourself. People get confused. Monks were told, OK, you can protect yourself. Somebody comes to hit you. You know, you can push them away. But you don't take a life. And the most important life not to take is a human life. OK, why? Why is it important not to take a human life? Do you think the person suffers who is killed? No. People that are dead don't suffer. Okay? But I listen what's going on down in LA and Orange County now. And the gangs. And they go shoot at the guy they don't like, but they don't they don't know how to shoot. They never in the army. They don't know how to aim straight. So they kill everybody but the person they aim at. Right? Yeah. They kill grandma, 
They kill little babies, mm -hmm. okay? And, you know, because they don't know how to shoot. See, I would take all their guns away and give them a stick mm -hmm. and say, go hit him with a stick. Maybe you can actually hit the guy you're looking for. Yeah, go study Kung Fu, then go do something. So why is it so It's suffering? The Buddha was about, we stop being unhappy, we stop suffering. When someone dies, everybody suffers around. Mom suffers, dad, brother, sister, girlfriend, boyfriend, somebody they go to school with. Maybe they throw the newspaper in the town, people remember. But the person that dies doesn't suffer. The person that dies, they move on. And most of us in Buddhism, we believe they have rebirth. They move on to the next birth. Right? So they don't suffer. Hey, hey, hey. Mom's looking at you. <laughs> so the, the five precepts are not about being a good person. We think that's what it is. It's not. It's about not causing suffering. So I don't take a life so I don't cause suffering. Okay? If I have a problem with somebody, a person, I figure another way to solve that problem. But then also we don't take other lives because we can cause suffering with animals. All right? So it, but it starts off with a person and comes down. We don't take things that don't belong to us. Everybody's got a cell phone now, right? Everybody, you got a cell phone? Whoa, your mother's good mother. <laughs> you say, thank you, mom. Phone. Yeah, because she tried to protect you, but everybody's got a cell phone. So if somebody takes your cell phone, you're not very happy because you all the time you play with cell phone. You, you, you text, I can't do that. My thumbs are so big, I can't even, I have to use a little pen thing, you know, because but I, I watch them. I watch them walk into walls, watch it, walk into poles. I'm driving along, I see people walk into things because they, they're with their phone and stop paying attention to what's going on. So, but it's very important. That's all I'm saying. They talk to people, they text people, they play games, they buy new shoes, right? We have a koi pond. I wanted to look up uh, a new, new, uh, filter for the koi pond a couple days ago. I got my phone, looked it up. Lowe's had filters, $129. So I went and bought one for the koi pond. Wow. So now I take your phone. Now you can't phone somebody, they can't phone you, you're unhappy. Not everybody's rich. Some people, a big deal to get a phone. That's the most valuable thing they have. So now they're unhappy. You have the phone. You don't need the phone, you already have a phone. So you cause them unhappiness. You take what they have. Whatever it is. You don't say things that will hurt people. It's the hardest one in the whole world. Don't say things that hurt other people. And it's very easy to do. You don't have to be intelligent. You don't have to be talented. You don't have to be big. You can open your mouth and hurt people. And the Buddha, it isn't just, we say, good speech. Because the Eightfold Path, right speech is in there. But it's all kinds of things. Don't talk behind their back. Don't say things like, uh, maybe they got the job you wanted, you didn't get it. Or maybe they got the award you want, and you didn't get it. So don't say things bad about them to make yourself look good. So the Buddha talked about all these different bad types of speech. Don't do those, okay? Because they would hurt them. And one of the simple rule is don't say something you wouldn't say to them. That stops a lot of the speech. Don't don't say, did you know that they they uh, did this? They were in jail. Did you know they were in jail? Why do you tell somebody that? What's your purpose? Cash. You know? Or is it just to hurt them or make yourself look bigger? 
So it's, it's about hurting other people. It's about not doing harm. We do powerful harm with our mouths. We do it all the time. We gossip. We backbite. We don't even think we're doing something wrong until somebody hears us talking about them and then we get embarrassed. And then we know, oh, I shouldn't have said that. We don't have sexual misconduct. Okay, my teacher translated that as adultery. Americans have a very difficult time having one wife. They have a difficult time. So when he translated it, I use his translation. Uh, but really the Buddha said all kinds of sexual misconduct. In Buddhism, you know, Christianity, uh, sex is very different than in Buddhism. As long as we don't hurt people, there's nothing wrong with sex, right? But when we hurt someone, yes, there's something wrong. So we always have to have respect for people. We have to worry about how they feel. We don't treat them as uh, something less than us. And we have to think about that. We have to be responsible. And I think adultery is important because I think when a man or a woman commits adultery, it, there's no bigger insult. Say, your husband commits adultery. That is the biggest insult he can give you. That's what I think. And the same thing the other way around. And it's very hurtful. And then finally, drinking. You know, in the beginning, there were only four precepts. Did you know that? And there's a sutra where the Buddha, they came and they said, please tell us how to live our life. And the Buddha gave four precepts. And they were that way for a long time. And I looked and I looked and I looked and I looked and I tried to find the, the, the sutra where he talked about drinking. And boy, did he talk about drinking. And it's very simple. He said, if you go to drinking, see, Indians are very difficult as well. They don't know when, to, they're like Japanese. You know about the Japanese, they start to drinking, they drink till they fall down. Indians the same way. They drink till they fall down. Vietnam, same thing. <laughs> same thing? Okay. So he said, do not, do not drink because when you get to drinking, then you want to go see Dancing Girl. Yes. <laughs> and after you see Dancing Girl, then you want to go gamble. Yes. Mm -hmm. And by the time the night's over, you have no money. Yeah. You've gambled your house away. You go home, you have to tell your family, we have nothing, we have, to, we have no house. Yes. I have no money in the bank anymore. I destroyed your inheritance. Yes. I'm sorry, which does, doesn't make anybody feel any better, right? I'm sorry, we have no food, we have no house, yes. we have no farm, everything gone. The whole money people, <laughs> yeah. Money, yes. yeah. Yeah, so the Buddha said, okay, don't drink. Yeah, just that's a simple solution because you can cause so much harm. And, uh, you know, in America we have Alcoholics Anonymous for people who need encouragement not to drink. We have meetings here every Monday for Al Anon. And I need to make a nice sign, put it up. Al Anon is the, is the family of the people who drink because they, they are affected. And and Alcoholics Anonymous, many people don't stop drinking until they've destroyed their family. When their wife leaves, their children won't talk to them. They have no home. They sleep on the street. Then finally one day they think maybe I need to stop drinking. But they, they basically ruined their life. So we did the confession during the ceremony. And we say the confession, all schools of Buddhism that I know of say that confession. And that's because the Buddha taught us everybody breaks the precepts. Everybody is human. You, you are as good as you can be, but now we understand. You try very hard, but then you said something about your friend. It's a friend, and you said something not so good. And now you're sorry that you said it, so you say, I'm sorry. And every two weeks we start over. We say, okay, I did pretty good. Now I start over. I promise not to take life. 
not to take something that doesn't belong to me, not to say things that will hurt other people, not to commit adultery, and not to drink. And I promise that over again. And I have to tell you, if you notice, maybe you didn't. I, do, I don't say not drink anymore. I say not become intoxicated. Because I don't, I have people I'd say, you know, if you have a beer, one beer, it's not a problem. But if one beer is two beers, is three beers, is four beers, is five, if you could have one beer, that's not what the Buddha was talking about. But like you say, Vietnam men, they drink, yeah. they fall over. <laughs> then they don't need to drink at all. It's my brother. <laughs> yeah? Yes. Yeah. My family is one. I join him, you know. My brother is the same way. Yeah. Yeah, so he, long time, alcoholics and others. You know, even right now, Mr. Rock, I still enjoy happy. Yeah. I love So, in the old days, 2,500 years ago, nobody had a watch. Nobody had a calendar. The monks, they live out under trees, right? They walk from village to village. Mm -hmm. So the Buddha said, Twice a month, you come together, you do ceremony, and see, the monks have to recite their rules, 250 rules. But really, the five are the important ones. The, the other ones, yeah, you keep the five good, you're probably keeping the other rules good. Okay, They're there, but they're not as important as those first five. And then we have five more that are really important about having becoming wealthy and you know, eating the wrong time and stuff like that. So he said, you get together twice a month. How do we know when to get together? When we have a full moon? And when we there's no moon, new moon. And the monks can look in the sky at night and know it's time for the ceremony. And then they would come together. And the, what they usually do is if they broke a rule, then they go to, like, uh, he goes to him and says, I broke a rule. If they did a very bad thing, then they have to come to me and say, I'm sorry, I broke this rule. And maybe I will tell them, we never hit anybody with a stick. We joke, but we never hit. I may say, okay, you need to go for three days, you go in the forest and you think about what you did. And then you come back and start over again. But then if they did a very, very bad thing, then we have to have five monks. And the monks have to decide, can you stay? Are you sorry? And almost always they say, okay. You have tears in your eyes, okay, we give you a second chance. Okay, you can stay. So we do that over and over again. It's really important to remember that you're not a failure because you didn't keep a precept. As long as you keep starting over again, you keep renewing. So the last thing we do in the ceremony is we take the three refuges. We go to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha for refuge. And then, so we do that over and over again. But Americans, I have to put sugar with it, you know, because it, it's too long otherwise. And then they go, oh, oh, it's that time again? Oh, why didn't I know? Sir, yes? Is that our way of here, like, to say, protect the Christian from not being able You have to speak up a lot. I'm a little hard of hearing. I got a hearing aid. Uh, Buddhist? How is it like, if we call them this, they're bad, how is it for us to forgive ourselves? Because, you know, as for Christian, you can't forgive us. Okay, I'm having a hard, turn that off. I'm having... I was wondering, like, for us, like, for how is it for us, like, um, to, uh, like we feel like we did something wrong and we wanted to redeem ourselves. Yeah. Redeem yourself. Yeah. Well it depends on what what you did wrong. Whoa, don't don't play with that. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> we had a small child just move the camera. I hope you can still see me. <laughs> it it depends on what what you did wrong. Uh, a lot of things um, simply deciding, you have to talk to yourself. We, our primary practice here is meditation, mm -hmm. okay? 
But not all temples, the main thing, that we have a building just for meditating in. But some places they, they chant. That's their primary practice. Um, but with meditation practice, I tell people they have to do three things. They have to meditate on a regular basis. They have to reflect on their day. And I think every day, reflect. What happened today? What did I do? Everything okay? And if you reflect on the day and you did something that you're not happy with, you did something you're not proud of, then you need to look at why you did that. But also, maybe somebody hurt your feelings and made you mad. Yeah. See, big, strong guys, we don't like to admit that we get our feelings hurt and we get mad. We just say, oh, why well, But that's what happens. We get our So you have to think, okay, why did I get my feelings hurt? Because it always comes back to us. All right? If somebody said something and they, they made us mad, we are the problem, not them. Because we can always just forget about what they said. So that reflection is important, particularly out in the world. And the last thing, you have to be honest. It's very hard to be honest. You have to be honest that sometimes you're the problem. And, uh, you know, and you can usually figure it out. When your mom and dad are unhappy, your sister won't talk to you, and your girlfriend walked away from you, you're probably the problem. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably not them. <laughs> but if you hurt somebody, it's probably a good idea to go say you're sorry. Somehow you hurt them. Um, people are always surprised around here, you know. I've been a monk 44 years. I say I'm sorry to people. The other day, that guy sitting back there, I was in a very bad mood. My leg hurt really, really bad. I have congestive heart failure, you know. It's hot, I'm frustrated. <laughs> I yelled at him, and then I had to, later I had to apologize, right? Because that's what we do. Because you're old, it's not an excuse. Because you're the oldest monk, some people think I'm high monk, that's not an excuse. If you hurt somebody's feelings, you still have to apologize. And I'm a human being like everybody else. I get tired, I get cranky. Uh, you know, and I take a lot of medicines that all of them say, do not go into the sun, do not get hot, and do not overwork. And so then I get cranky. And then I have to apologize all the time. I have to say, I'm so sorry. And the excuse doesn't work. You know, I say, well, you know, I take, oh, just, just say you're sorry. I'm sorry, I, I got irritable. And then, then the honesty is to realize you've got irritable, and the reflection is to try not to let that situation happen again, whatever it is, the constant. And confrontation a lot of times is the problem. You know, that you, you get around somebody that doesn't agree with you, so now you're going to argue. Why? You know, to argue and get mad does not feel good. He's a psychologist, right? What happens when you argue and get mad? You get a tummy ache, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you don't feel good. Yes, Yeah, so you, you try to move into a situation where that doesn't happen. But it's ongoing. We do it for the rest of our life. We try to keep the precepts. We try to be kind. We try not to do harm. Okay? We try to learn to be gentle. And sometimes that's difficult, you know, because our friends say, well, you got to be a tough guy. You know? You know, you don't have to be a tough guy. So, was that an answer for your question? Um, I got a better understanding. Okay. All right. So, thank you for coming. We have some wonderful food, I know. <laughs> I'm so happy. Thank you. I'm so happy to go to the night. I'm happy. Yeah. I love to go. Yeah. I learned a lot. Yeah. I didn't curse.
So we do, we do something different here. I've never seen a Vietnam temple. But I was, I, at first I lived in Japanese temple. So you know how the Chinese have the little ground up uh, incense they put on flame? Well, that's what we do. So we have, we do that. Yeah. And I will go ahead and bless the water. So then when you come up, if you taking the water, you can take it with you. So, the line of the line I did look up the date today, too. Did you? Yeah, I can't I'm proud of you. Maybe this is the 